Hey, I'm Kati Spaas and I'm a world-renowned author and speaker on high sensitivity and a retired coach to professional artists and performers. Spotlight Stress is your guide to build confidence, find your superpower and claim your shine. Our lovely guest today is Kelly Rutherford. And you might know her from Gossip Girl, Melrose Place, or a ton of other TV shows and movies. But you might not know that she also has a global artisan shop, an entire platform to connect a ton of products that are very local and you know, share them with the world. Today, Kelly is our guest, and she's here to share about her own transformation process and all the things that she is up to. So, hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us today. How have you been? Oh, thank you. I've been really well. Thank you so much. You? How have you been? You've been good. I, we just caught up. <laughs> yeah, we just caught up, but I've been good. Thank you. I've been enjoying my little baby girl and my son a little bit more at home, and it's and it's just an absolute blessing. So yes, yeah. we were talking earlier about, you know, how you've had to really transform yourself because you had this really rough period in your life where you had to sort of let go of your children, where you, you know, got bankrupt, where you really hit rock bottom and just had to reinvent yourself from scratch. Can you share us a little bit about, you know, what happened? How did you feel? And, you know, most importantly, how did you cope with that and reinvent yourself? Yeah, I think it was, it was, um, you know, I think a lot of people go through these things in life. So, and that's sort of what I realized in my own journey was, um, you know, whether it's through a, a divorce or, through business or any type of loss or things like that, that we, that we experience any kind of suffering really. Right. So I think, um, it's something that we, um, we survive and figure out new ways of being and new ways of looking at things and realize the gifts involved in those things. Maybe not in the moment, you know, in the moment you're just in the midst of sometimes you're just in disbelief that it's happening, <laughs> but, um, sort of once you get past that point, um, there's so many, so many um, lessons and so many gifts in all of these things that we go through. And, and we also realize sort of how we teed it up in our lives or how, not everything obviously, but um, certain experiences, how, where we were coming from really um, had an impact on how that played out, right? So depending on how aligned we were with ourselves and you know listening to ourselves and what we wanted versus just sort of at the whims of things you know I think that um, we realize our part in creating things as well so it's a good good learning experience <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and I think that's beautiful what you're stating there because it is all about that process and that journey of of creation right and and reinventing yourself I mean, for me, that was an entire different process. I also felt like I had my rock bottom. If I hear yours, I think, you know, mine was nothing compared to that. But it was enough for me to, do, to make yeah. that transformation because it felt to me like I'm not willing to go any deeper. So the only way is up, you know? And that's when I really started grasping all the tools that I could find and how I how I discovered the tools that really worked for me, even though that, you know, for 13 years I had been taking these classes and workshops and even spiritual education, everything to be able to evolve myself, but it just felt like I couldn't implement it or something mm -hmm. and I couldn't live it. And at that point, there was just no other option anymore than to start living it. And that was a big change for me so what helped you during that period how did you like practically what did you do to go from survive to thrive again like you're doing today 
Yeah. Well, it takes time, you know, like you said, you know, it takes time to sort of implement new ways of being and, and looking at things. And, and uh, again, in the moment, you don't realize the blessings, obviously, you're just, <laughs> you know, dealing with the day to day, getting up and getting through the day and functioning. But um, slowly, you know, you, you, um, you realize you have to kind of let go and say, okay, I can't control all of this. I can't, can't, you know, I don't have all the answers and I'm not going to have all the answers. So what's the alternative? You know, the alternative is to sort of, um, you know, I read books. I read Abraham Hicks a lot. I read, you know, you know, I guess like some spiritual books. And then I, you know, talked to a couple of people who said, you know, you, you know, really talked about focus and where we put our focus and how that really creates our realities. And so it was a lot about taking the focus away from the problem and focusing on what I wanted, what I wanted to create versus continually talking about and focusing on what was, you know, the problems and what was going on. So that was a huge shift. Um, and allowing it space to become something else, because, you know, if, the more you put negative energy or negative thought or worry towards something, <laughs> it create, you know, this versus putting sort of thought into creating the new and, and visualizing what, what you would like to happen in the situation and really spending more time there. So that, that was a process that was sort of probably the first process. And then, you know, just getting on with it, you know, healing, a lot of it's just healing and you go through times where you feel great. And then you have a few days where you're just, and then over time you have, most of your days are really good. And then every once in a while you look back and have a moment, you know, which is natural, but I almost, it's almost like you're grieving now. It's like the experience there, you realize all the things that were, that came out of it. So you honor it as well. It's different. Yeah, and it, it's like you say, it's always easy from hindsight to put things into perspective and to see and receive those gifts. I mean, when you're in a good place, when you're not in a good place, it's not easy to see the gifts from the situation. But, you know, when you do the work, when you transform, when you grow, it is easy to see the gifts that came from it because that's just mindset work. But it, it's so important that we don't forget to give ourselves the time to mourn. You know, whether it is taking, having to take distance from your children or from money or from a partner or from an animal that you lost, you know, it doesn't matter or a job. It doesn't matter what it is. I hear a lot of actors who have to go through that process in a different level, of course, when they don't get a part that they really, really love. You know, it's always first that little space of mourning and of, accepting the fact that this is the situation and that you know you can't control it from that moment anymore and that when you give that space to acceptance new space evolves from there so that you know we can focus on is there something else possible we can do so that we can start seeing solutions or that we can move forward and a way that we can really flow from the essence of life and surrender to what is going on so that we can you know reach the upper echelon of what is going on here and that's sometimes it just takes that journey but it always starts with acceptance and and taking that time to grieve because if we think that we can't and we have to be strong it will take so much longer for the mind to get ready for that next step. So I'm actually really happy that, you know, you can share that you did have to take that time to just go to, you know, get through the day because it, mm. that's just what it is. We need that time as well. And it's just sad that a lot of people claim that, you know, like it's not supposed to be there or like we have to be strong or we can't be weak or whatever it is. It's a struggle yeah. today, you know, the fact that we can't show any weakness, especially towards ourselves. It's, it's, I know because I do that a lot, you know, at the moment that I feel I need a break or I want to rest a little bit, it's like, oh, you're weak. You know, show must go on. And, you know, we can get really hard in ourselves. And 
I remember a time when I was doing a lot of that, that it just made me more and more tired because that's exhausting, yes. that kind of behavior. So I'm so proud that you, you know, you found that way, you, you surrender to it. And then it creates just that little bit of energy to pick up the book and start reading, which creates a little bit more positive energy to pick up the yeah. next, to watch the video, to follow the course. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're creating yourself in a way that works a lot better very often. And For sure. if you're looking at your situation today, I mean, we've already talked before. So I know that you are very open and that you work a lot with your energy and creating your own life and mastering that and taking your own responsibility. So what is next for you now? What is your vision and, and what do you want to embody in your future, near future? Yeah, I think, you know, now it's just really focusing on what I love and creating more of that. So a lot of it again is focus and allowing and, and it's a different way of, of being. It's It's a real trust that I'm always being guided and directed and, and the more, like you talk about, we go within and get quiet, the more we know the best thing to do. Um, and it, it is a lot of trust, trusting your own guidance system and, and focusing on what you love more than the other things are kind of vibrate out of your life if you don't give them attention. So, and I think once you've been through a really dramatic experience, you you almost realize what it, it takes time to realize what it's like to be calm and, and your nervous system to calm down from those experiences, you know? So, and once it does, you're, you so value that, that any drama, you just, you just don't have the bandwidth for anywhere, any situations that create more of that. So it's, um, it's almost like you get rid of that. It's like, okay, you need that big experience to say, okay, no more. We don't, you know, we don't need to create that anymore. But it is a lot about about trusting and self care, like you talk about, and and going within and um, and and living simply. You know, I think we we as women too, men as well, feel like we do have to be tough and strong all the time. But you're a mother, you're a wife, you're a businesswoman. You know, there's places in which you have to show up and and be that way. But more and more, I'm finding that the more authentically we show up, the, the more everyone responds to it. You know, the more authentically we show up, if we show up and we're a little whatever, that that's kind of honored and appreciated more than a showing up being, you know, trying to be something that we're not in that day. Um, so the, you know, our authenticity and truth and, and being who we really are and if we're having a day, have a day, you know, don't even question it, just have it. It's like, okay, this is interesting that I'm feeling this way today. Maybe I do need to sit down and get quiet and have a good cry, or maybe I do need to go get that massage or, you know, it's just, again, it's all about really being in tune with what we need and not having to be strong. And I think that resistance, I think the having to be strong creates resistance and doesn't allow certain things in that we want. So how can we be receptive? And because that, that toughness really puts up, it keeps all the good things coming to us in resistance. So. I love that. I 100% agree with everything that you're saying because whatever we give attention grows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the moment we stop dwelling in what's not working for us and we just surrender to the situation and from there on put the focus on the things that we do would like to experience and see grow and want more of you know it will be like you'll function like some sort of magnet attracting more and more of it it's just so beautiful how the brain and energy work in the exact same way and so does Facebook by that matter, you know, and then the algorithm, the algorithm, yeah. the more yeah. you, you click on something and the more attention you give to an article or, or messages, the more they will show you of this, of, of the same and your brain works in the exact same way. And so does energy because when we're yeah. at that frequency, 
you know, will attract more of the same frequency. I love that you're sharing about, you know, just showing up as your authentic self because it is so true. You, you know, people will resonate a lot more to the, the real you because they feel connected to that instead of putting up some sort of strong iron wall, which is creating distance instantly. So I yeah. love that. And do you have like some insights from your behind the scenes? Because you've done a lot of movies and TV shows. How do you channel this? in your acting work because you know you do a great job with that so how do you use that authenticity and your emotions to like really embody the persona that you're playing mm. again i think it's an alchemy i talk about how you know you read a script or you memorize a scene and you you have this idea of how you think it's going to be right it's like life we have an idea of how we think it's going to be and then we get to the set and then the actor has their sort of take on the scene and the director has their take on the scene and, and the other actor has their take. So you're sitting there, you know, going, okay, oh, that may not have been how I exactly saw the scene, but it's kind of interesting and in learning to flow with that. So it's, it's, it's like you have an idea, but then being open to other ways of exploring things, right, in life. So we have an idea that, okay, this is what I want, but I'm open to something better and I'm open to um, even something better than I can imagine, right? So it's that way like with acting and, and yeah, I have ideas about, okay, who is this person and, and who do I know that's like that? And, and where's the humor and the humanity in it, right? So for me, acting so much is finding the humor in our humanity, even if it's a dramatic role is sort of like, I mean, humans are funny. I mean, we are like, like characters you know we think we were the greatest thing ever we you know we don't even get that there's a whole <laughs> universe out there that we can co-create with we just think we know everything and like you know we're greater than the animals and we're greater than the plants and the trees and we're industrious and we you know I mean, it's like kind of funny but when when we sort of align with which makes our lives dip, which is why i think we create the dramas and we have all of these challenges and we're still because we if you know, and a lot of that's been created on the planet, it's not our, you know, it's, it's a, a frequency that's, we've been kind of held in. So, but to kind of get out of that and away from that and connect up with something so much greater, I mean, it's hard for anyone to deny that, you know, you look around at the trees and the, the animals and the way nature, just nature without humans here, like nature itself is so well organized and so highly intelligent that why not connect up with what created all of that? And you don't have to define it, name it, whatever. Just know it exists that, um, you know, as mothers, I think we really get that we're, we're portals of sorts. You know, we're, we're, we co-create with our partners. Um, we co-create, but we're a port, you know, with the life comes through us to this planet, right? And then we're like the bridge between the worlds, right? So um, I think you realize the magic of things, you know, you don't have to be a mother to realize this because any co-creation is magical, anything like that. But when we get quiet and connect up with source and co-create our realities, it's so much easier than the way we've been taught to do it. And um, it takes a lot of just sort of letting go of the ways in which, again, we've been taught to do things to kind of be tough and barrel through and fight and the scarcity mindset that, you know, this is mine, that's yours. And I've got to save a lot over here for a, a rainy day kind of thing. When really the Jedi training is that we can manifest anything and, and we have infinite sums of money in our bank accounts. We're just working with a low vibration thing called money um, that is limiting. So it's, it's useful and it's a way, it's, a, it's a, a language of sorts, but it's, there's so many more ways to manifest and create what we want that um, by just thinking it and aligning with it and allowing it and, um, 
you know, because it's like so many of the things we want are just things we want. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's not like it, it, it's just create. It's creation. It's another form of creation. Yeah, but I do have to say that you know, for me, what I've noticed these past years is that. I've had always a lot of resistance on money because it, it felt like something I would have to work hard for, you know, so I would have to give in in order to receive. But what I've learned these past years is that money is just energy. It, it is just love. It's just a, a gratitude note that someone, for example, in my case, someone gives it as a thank you to me for the energy I give to them and the insights and the service and the tools, you know, for me doing my job, money is actually just a vessel. It's a vehicle that just says, thank you. Here's a lot of love back to you. And it's just a tool to get the things that you want that lie behind the money. Like you say, you know, it is, we often forget that it's not money that we want, but it is what it can buy us. And that yeah. is something that a lot of us forgot because, yeah, I want freedom. Yeah, but what does that look like to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, mm -hmm. if I have more money, then I can invest in myself. Okay, so you actually want to invest in yourself. It's not that you want the money. You want to be able to invest in yourself and, and work on yourself and grow. That is just yeah. the beauty of it. But we do need to, you know, we are living in this material world as energetic beings. So it is okay mm -hmm. that we bring that frequency of money up and see it as a, as a vessel of love and a tool yes. to, to just, you know, support us in that journey. And it's, it's okay, but there's so much, um, there's such a big load on money sometimes. You know, people make it so heavy and it doesn't have to be because it can be fun too. There's nothing yes. wrong with it. We can bear bills with love and we can receive with love. And then it's just something that is in our reality, the same way that, you know, this chair that I'm sitting on is here to support me. And I do like my chair to be pretty and comfortable. You know, I do like that aspect of my life as well, but it's not like I'm dependent on it. I'm still happy if it, this is a wooden third hand chair, you know, it doesn't matter. So that's the, the, the less dependent and attached we get to it, the more it can flow from a place of joy and love. And then it is something really beautiful, actually. Can you relate mm -hmm. to that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. I'm so happy to hear that. Is there... Anything you would like to share with us? Like, you know, you're doing so many beautiful things today. Tell us a little bit more of that. Um, well, I've, you know, I've just gotten involved more in sort of storytelling, so producing side of things. So I've got a few things in development now, which are really beautiful. And I've been working on this website, this shop, Sovereign Collective, Sovereign Collective which is bringing artisans and entrepreneurs around the world together and, and being able to shop them globally. So it's basically, you can shop the world um, and, and being able to support them through a podcast, through a magazine, you know, all of this. So we've got very high and low. We've got young people just out of fashion school to other brands that are, you know, focused on sustainability and, and you know, artistry in some way. And um, so it's fun and we'll have a magazine with a city guide and, and all of that and then shoppable content. So that's sort of the future is, is that. So creating content that's shoppable, that's not just a commercial or a whatever, but actual content, whether it's a TV show or um, you know, interviews with people and so on and so forth that you can shop, city guides that you can shop. So yeah, that was just my my co-founder and I um, have been working on that for about eight months and we just very, did a very soft launch of the website. So now we're building out the tech more and doing all of that. So that's yeah, amazing. It's been I think that's a really cool initiative and I just can't wait to see, you know, what is local over there and wow, you know, <laughs> what do you get over there? And it's just Fun. really cool to bring it, you know, the culture of another country just 
right into your home with just a few clicks of the button. That's just that's yeah. the, the day we're living in today, but it's not mm-hmm. always that easy to do it. So it's really cool that you're facilitating this, not just for us as, as the buyer, but also for all the people who wouldn't even know where to start because there's so much going on behind the scenes to make this. Yeah. So I think it's really cool that you're putting your time and energy in that as well. And mm-hmm. um, acting wise, are you working on something? Is something going on? Are you aspiring something? Yeah, so I'm still acting. I just because of 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 all the lockdowns and stuff, it was just like, okay, I've got it. I wanted to sort of start doing these other things I had been thinking about. It was a great opportunity to sort of say, okay, to be on a set right now is a little challenging and odd and you know, whatever. So it's it was a great moment to um be able to develop these other things I had been wanting to do. So I'm I've been doing that in the meantime. And then yeah, of course, and a lot of what I'm producing and, and developing now I, I would be in as well so um yeah and then I'm good we're, we're building out for for Sovereign Collective sort of a show where I can go around and talk to different people and brands and the city so it'll be fun you know to do something a little more like that as well so yeah it's just I'm open to it, you know, and, and I feel like everything kind of aligns when it should. And I've just been really thankful for the opportunity to have this time to develop these other things I've been wanting to do. So that's really cool. That's really putting things into perspective and making the absolute best out of it. So you're such an example to a lot of us. And I I do hope that this, you know, inspired many people to really follow their own journey as well no matter what happened to them or or in their life because you know there's always the other side of things and I think that you really you know took this opportunity with both hands and made the best out of it so you're such a big example thank you for your time with us today and um, I'm happy to talk to you soon again Oh, you too. Thank you for all the beautiful work that you do. Thank you. See you. (laughs) Bye.